are you? I am Christy of Yarn Cafe Creations. I am the dyer behind Yarn Cafe Creations and the hostess of this podcast, the Yarn Cafe Creations podcast. I'm so creative, huh? Uh, today is um, Thursday, July 16th, 2020. It is a warm summer day here in Payson, Utah. And I'm so happy to be back. It's been a month. It's been a month since I last podcast. And I thought, you know what, probably a little over a month, actually. Um, My, how time does fly. I hope you guys have had a good July so far. Uh, It is effectively middle of the month, isn't it? Um, So I need to get a Band-Aid. I just, I love my signature needles, but they are pointy. And I have one spot on my finger that they keep gouging. And I have band-aids somewhere, maybe in my pocket. Aha, uh-huh, they're in my pocket. Uh, so anyway, I'm happy to be back. I'm so excited uh, to podcast again. And I thought about doing it every day for like the last two weeks. Um, but I had released a new collection of yarn recently. Um, and it took a lot of time and I was just exhausted, you know, and I think, I think it's okay to recognize that, right? So I hope you guys are doing well. Um, but real quick, uh, I am, like I said, the diary behind Yarn Cafe Creations. You can find my yarn at yarncafecreations.com. And uh, I am yarn underscore cafe underscore creations on Instagram. I do have a Facebook page. I don't get on it very often, so I apologize if you've ever messaged me. I don't usually see the messages until (laughs) until it's to the point of being rude that I haven't emailed you back, so I apologize. And also on Ravelry, um, I am Yarn Cafe Creations, or it might actually, you might be able to find my patterns under Christy Houghton, H-O-U-G-H-T-O-N. And for some reason, I well, didn't realize I was getting messages on Ravelry. I don't know if they weren't coming to my my email or what, but I went on there the other day and th- saw that I had a few messages, so I apologize. And I have a pattern on Ravelry called Bygone Days Socks, and I know that there are a couple mistakes that I plan on fixing. So I apologize if you have purchased that. I will be fixing that. I think most people have figured out it's just a number there's a number discrepancy as far as repeat these rows but i hope that you guys have figured it out um but i'll be fixing that um but anyway it's, it's good to be back i'm trying to think of what i've been doing over the last month besides dyeing yarn uh, we had the fourth of july um gosh a lot has been going on in the united states and I think around around the world, a lot of uh, protesting going on. I think that had already started uh, last time I podcast. Um, so I, that's what inspired me to create a whole new line of yarn. Is I, I although you know there's some some good changes happening in the world. It's very stressful though, and I'll just be 100 percent honest with you. It's stressful for me to see the civil unrest. And I, judging from the people that I've spoken to, that's that's pretty. Uh, widespread so I needed some happy colors in my life and uh, I'll have to show you those a little bit later but I I dyed up a whole new collection based on the strawberry shortcake dolls do you guys remember those I had I trying to remember if I had the which one I had when I was little I think I only had one of them but they were dolls for all of you youngsters out there strawberry shortcake dolls listen to me that sounded condescending I didn't mean it to sound that way because I know they had strawberry shortcake dolls uh the newer version uh like in the I think they had different versions in 2003 they came out with some new ones but strawberry shortcake the original came out in like 1970s or 80s and these dolls smelled like strawberry shortcake smelled like strawberries huckleberry pie smelled like huckleberries lemon meringue smelled like lemons it was pretty awesome back then to have dolls that that smelled delicious. So I remember having those. And then they had cartoons that I used to watch. And then when my girls, I have four daughters, and when they got a little older, I think they started watching, I think they watched the second version of Strawberry Shortcake. 
I actually owned one of the videos that uh, I was talking to my daughter Tristan about it the other day and it started bring we both started getting jogged memory jogging uh, of the, what was in that video so funny so anyway I have a strawberry shortcake collection that I just released and that was really fun making um, I haven't made a lot of super colorful yarn colorways over the last year or so I was uh, staying more in like neutral territory more wearable colors and you know I just said screw it I'm gonna make I'm gonna make some happiness and I did and uh, I also at the same time had gotten some new yarn bases <coughs> excuse me um, I have allergies too uh, I uh, got some new yarn bases that I was dying on so that was a lot of fun um, and that's I think that's about all I've been doing over the last month is working <coughs> and what else fourth of july which i don't think we did anything on i think i dyed yarn on the fourth of july um gosh there's been you know i'm used to coming on here when tristan and i would do our the girls in the yarn cafe podcast we'd always be talking about upcoming fiber festivals or fiber festivals that we had just gotten back from <clears throat> and as I mean obviously we haven't had any of that lately in fact Knit City just got canceled we were both going to Knit City uh, Tristan was actually gonna be vending there in Canada and so we're really sad about that I'm really sad about that um, and Rhinebeck obviously got canceled so we're, we're looking ahead to 2021 I think as the next uh, yarn festivals and hopefully those will those will still happen um, I know Edinburgh Yarn Festival I'm hoping they have that uh, this next year although I haven't heard anything if you guys have heard anything please leave a message below um, I would love to know if they're gonna have the uh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival that was so even though I was so sick the second part of that actually I got started getting sick I think the day we got there um, I still enjoyed it so much and it was so fun hanging around with all the people that we met there um, and seeing the sights. It was beautiful and I want to go back. Um, so I'm hoping they have that next year. I'm hoping that Rhinebeck happens next year. That's another one of my uh, one of my favorite festivals. And again, a lot of these most of the time it's not for the yarn. So if you've never been to a yarn festival, um, I think you find out quickly that it's not about the yarn uh, usually and it's not about the classes usually it's about what happens in between all of that even I mean even during the classes meeting people um, but it's really about the relationships it's about after hours going to dinner with people sitting around the you know the lobby knitting with people um, just getting to know people that is the best part so I'm, I miss all of that uh, traveling can be can be tough if you do a lot of it and Tristan and I both do that we travel together and we do a lot of traveling and so this year has been so different not being able to travel I hope it comes back next year but uh, so I, I just wanted to check in with all of you guys and show you what I've been working on um, we'll start with what I'm wearing I think last time we were here I had showed you my Jupiter crop which I had put long sleeves on so I had I finished all that but that you guys I decided to steak it look at this I and I fear if I stand up you're not gonna be able to see the bottom because of the way I have my camera positioned but I'll try um, I have never steaked anything in my life never ever and I decided, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try to steak this because I, I just didn't. It's a beautiful pattern and it looks adorable on so many people. Um, I just, d I think I made it. Well, I'm trying to remember what I did. I didn't like. Uh, I made it longer, which was fine, um, but it was a little too, a little too big in. I think in the back, it didn't lay the way I wanted it to lay. And I think I had messed up on the short rows. That was probably my fault. But this is how the steaked version turned out. And I just, I had buttons, actually buttons that I had gotten at EYF in, last year when we went. And I finally found a project to put, product to put them on. So 
coupled with the long sleeves, you guys, this turned out, I love it. I, in fact, if you ever make a sweater and it just doesn't fit the way you want, I say, if you're never going to wear it anyway, why not do something like steak? Just try to make it into a cardigan. And I'm trying to see if you can, oh, I remember what it was that I didn't love. Um, I had made, I think I had made the second size and I usually make the first size of everything, but I had made the second size and I was using a sport weight that I, that I had. It wasn't the sport weight that I'm selling now, which is a, it's a 328 yards per skein. And this one was 300 and it was, I think it was a thicker gauge. So it, I was going to get a bigger sweater no matter how you looked at it. And so because the yoke, obviously, uh, as you go up in sizes, your yoke is going to be bigger. It's going to be longer. And so when I separated for the sleeves, it, it, when I was wearing it as a sweater, the sleeves were just too far down and it, it just fit funny on me and it bunched up around my neck weird. So I thought, you know, I'm, I know me and I know I probably won't wear it ever if I don't do something about it or I'll have to rip it out and start over or I, I just won't wear it. So I am just, I love it as a sweater. I just barely finished it today. Um, if I had been planning to steek this, I would have put a panel as I was knitting it because I just learned on all the videos I watched that um, usually you knit like, I think it's six or seven stitches in the middle of where you're going to steak and I didn't do that obviously because I didn't, hadn't planned on it and so it would have I think it would have fit I mean I, I still like the way it fits we're not going to look too closely at the bottom because I still have to block some of it I had already blocked the sweater I just hadn't blocked the band um, but I would have it would have just made it probably I could have made the band um, a little differently if I had done that and the but look at the mid, the inside how good that looks no one even showed me how I just really I watched a few videos and then I went for it look at this side see there's some little stitches sticking out here and there they may come unraveled at some point oh well oh well I'm just gonna be careful when I'm washing it and I'll probably use some a needle and thread and tack that down so that it uh, doesn't come unraveled at any point but I really am so happy in fact I'm gonna go back through my sweaters that I have and see if there are any that I'm like eh, I loved knitting that but I don't know if I'll ever wear it you know I can see some of my sweaters now um, and I have found that I'm, I'm really attracted to cardigans the, I, they're just more wearable for me because I I don't know why that's weird I'm trying to, I just realized that just now as I'm talking to you uh, I have uh, made several sweaters but my favorite ones are like the comfort fade cardies that I've made of Andrew Mary's um, other than that I don't wear a lot of my knitted sweaters but if I made them into cardigans I just might wear them more often right Anyway, the colors I used in this are new colors that I have in my shop. I actually have some kits put together um, on sport weight for this Jupiter crop. And um, they are in the colorways. Let's see. Gentleman is the main color. This it's like a it's like a slate blue. So gentleman, and then I have concrete as the gray. Ballerina is the the pink one. Um, oh, and then the light colored, this one right here is called dried rose petals. And this is golden honey. And on the arms, I've had a couple people ask me about the extending the arms and, and how much more yarn it took. Um, I, the pattern is set up in a way that there's only two quantities of yarn that you would need. So size like one, sizes one through six, uh, you need, I think, two for the main color and then one skein for each of the other four colors. And then sizes seven through, I think it goes up to size 10. 
um, you use three of the main color, but you still only use one of the contrast color. So I didn't, I didn't use more than what it called for in the pattern um, when I made the sleeves. I didn't, I didn't at all. So, and I even chose to use concrete, and that might be why I had enough. Well, that might be why I had enough because I didn't use the main color for the the ribbing. I used one of the contrast colors. I used concrete, and I also used concrete for the button band and for the bottom, the ribbing on the bottom. Um, but I think you you probably would still if you wanted to add sleeves. And I just made up <laughs> the color work right here. Um, I did the same color work as the body. Um, you can kind of see it it goes right along, doesn't it? Yeah, it matches down to here. But then after that, there was there's nothing on the chart in the pattern. And she actually uses a different chart for the sleeves. There's actually a different design that you put on the sleeves, but I chose to use the original chart for the body. And I put those on the sleeves and then I just winged it. And they didn't, you know, the pattern probably didn't line up on the seam. I didn't care because I figured, you know what, people don't look at the seam. It's under my arms and close to my body, so I didn't really care. Um, yeah, and so that's what I did and just kind of winged it. I wrote it down. Did I? No, I didn't actually, I didn't write it down. I didn't write it down. So when I was doing the second sleeve, I had to just kind of look over and count. I looked over and I'm like, okay, I did this, I did that. I, it was fine. It, it worked out just fine. But I would recommend writing it down. Just it, it might make it a little bit easier to remember. Uh, but it was it was a lot of fun to knit. Um, I would love to make another one and use the the band that goes in the middle so that I could steek it. And I, pr I might make a short sleeve version that is a cardigan too. Um, I think that would be adorable. That's the, actually even really cute over like a long sleeve shirt in the winter where, you know, you just want something to, to keep you a little bit warm. Uh, but anyway, it was a lot of fun to knit. Uh, Caitlin Hunter always has beautiful color work patterns. Speaking of color work, Tristan, my daughter, is coming out with a new pattern, I think. I think she's coming out with it on Monday, Sunday or Monday. And her birthday is on Sunday, the 19th. So I think she's either releasing it on her birthday or on Monday, I think. But it's it's a, it's a new color work sweater that I'm going to make next. Um, and another color work sweater that I'm looking ahead at making is the new one by Andrea Maori. Have you guys seen that one? It's a little different. It might not be everybody's style. I don't even know if it's my style. It's a cardigan with like a grandpa collar and a tie. It reminds me of the one that Caitlin Hunter came out with like a year or a year and a half ago that I think it had, I don't remember the name of it, but it had something to do with Willie Nelson. So it was kind of country, um, but Caitlin's is a little more, it has like bell sleeves, I think. It's a little bigger um, and Andrea's is a little more fitted and it's got belt loops on it, which is intriguing. And then she has a male version, a, a, a men's version that also. So, well, it, it could be male or female. It just doesn't have the, the wrap uh, band or what do you call it? The tie. It doesn't have the tie and it doesn't have belt loops. Um, and, and it has, I believe it has buttons. The, the other version with the tie does not have buttons on it. So I just love the design on it. It's slip stitching. And I've made Andrea's, um, what's it called, the night shift uh, shawl, or the, is it called the night shift, with a lot of slip stitches. And this looks like a similar pattern. It has slip stitching on it. And it's beautiful. And so I kind of want to make that one too. But I, because color work is a lot of fun. And I think, I don't, I haven't read the pattern closely, but I think, Andrea's is made in the round and then you steak it. At least I saw somebody online doing that, one of the testers. And so I would like to do that. Now that I've steaked, it was it wasn't as scary as I thought. And it took me took me like three weeks. This has been sitting for three weeks for me just to finish putting the buttons on and uh, securing the this back side right here. I just used a needle and thread. I, I did it by hand. I know a lot of people do it by machine. Um, but I, I just wanted to have a little more control over it just because I don't think I, 
cut it in the right place and I was afraid if I did it by machine I would just mess it up. So I just did it by hand and I did it today, right before this, um, but I love it. Turned out really good. And I have kits in the shop if anybody would like kits in these colors. I just love how it turned out. I think it's so flattering. It's super flattering as a sweater. It's a crop sweater for most people with short sleeves and I've seen it on so many people online. Very flattering on people. Uh, I just loved, I wanted long sleeves and I don't wear a lot of cropped stuff because I don't wear a lot of dresses. Uh, it looks to me, it looks adorable on dresses, the cropped sweater look. Um, but I, I don't wear a lot of dresses. In fact, I wear yoga pants and slippers. I've got slippers on right now. Not, I have jeans on today. My other job before I started dying full time, I used to have to wear, I didn't have to, but I did, I chose to wear, uh, dresses or dress pants with high heels all the time. I was always dressed up, which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed dressing up. Uh, so now to, you know, most days I don't even wear makeup. Most days I'm in the studio with yoga pants or jeans and uh, slippers. Sounds rough, huh? Yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's very nice to be able to do that. So anyway, that was the cr uh, Jupiter Crop by Boyland Knitworks. And I changed so many things on that. I should do a Ravelry page. I just haven't done a Ravelry page yet. Um, but let me show you one of the other designs that I worked on. This one was a lot of fun too. And I did have to make a couple of slight alterations just because of my body type. And this one's not released yet. I, am, I, I need to check with Tristan to find out when she's releasing it. This is one of my daughter Tristan's designs. It's called the Summer Court Tank. And it's a cute tank top cute that is and there's beading you can see the beads on the front there on the lace and you know we had just purchased uh, Tristan and I purchased beads at stitches uh, stitches West in California and Santa Clara this year this was the last event we went to it was in February it was right before or yeah it was the end of January beginning of February I think right before everything closed down and everybody you know stayed home and so we I was excited to be able to use my beads for a project and the pattern doesn't call for this but I also I decided to add beads to the front here you can see uh, the little beads right there it was really easy to add as you went um, and I uh, I made it the length and everything that it's supposed to be made in the pattern and I made it with my this color is called Chantilly lace and it's my new merino linen blend. It's 90% superwash merino, 10% um, linen. It's called my Irish linen base. People are people keep saying, what you know, what's Irish linen? It's actually a type of coffee, Irish coffee. And all my yarn bases are named after like a coffee type or something to do with a coffee shop. So I, it's called my Irish linen base. And I right now I only have a few colors. Um, it's it's been hard to get my hands on. Uh, the the supplier has run out of it so I'm waiting for the next batch to come in so it was it's my Irish linen I thought for summertime that would be super fitting even though 90% of it is still wool so it's not gonna be like a cool breezy top it's still gonna be wool um, and Tristan's designs are so wonderful I've really enjoyed making this I've made a few of her designs um, the back the back you, you cast off with an I-cord. And what I did, it turned out a little too big around, around. I, I, uh, I don't have small boobs, but I'm small under my boobs. So things tend to get a little big as they go down. They fit perfectly usually across my chest. But this was, it's supposed to be, um, have like, I think six to 10 inches or eight to 10 inches of, of ease on it. And so under my arms, it was just, it was sticking out to here. And I, I'm like, okay, I need to do something to make it more fitted. So I got real tricky, you guys. And no one even showed me how to do this. I just did it myself. I went, I took the I cord. I took the uh, long piece. In fact, it was still attached to the cake of the, the yarn 
hooked it to a tap tapestry needle, and then I just went in the middle of the I cord on the back bind off. I went through that and I, I used to do a lot of sewing and I'm like, I can just gather. It's like a casing. An I cord is kind of like a casing. It's just, it's stitches that are in a, in a cord, like a rope. And so I went through that and I have to still secure the gather because when I put it on, the gathers move a little bit. But what I did is I gathered it across the back so that it would fit. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could do this to so many things. And I secured my straps using overstitching, so you can't even see the stitches where I secured the strap. Um, anyway, yeah, I love how it turned out. It's so cute on. And I had to decide if I was going to wear this today or the, sh the crop. And I decided I wanted to show you guys the Jupiter crop. But... And another thing too is I, I, because I have larger, a larger chest, I wanted to make the triangles a little bit bigger and I didn't want to start the V until a little higher up so that I had a little more coverage. Um, and so I just altered it to do that in the pattern. And I, I think Tristan's got instructions in there of, of, you know, ways you can do that anyway, but that's, that's all I did. Look at how cute it is though. Look at those beads. They're just beautiful. And I used a, a little flegal needle. It's um, a little tool that I had never used before. And you basically put, it's just to pick up your, it's like a little miniature actually, it's a miniature crochet hook. And you put your beads on it and then you add them to your project as you go. And you can do beading in a couple different ways. You can add it to your yarn, you know, how many you're going to need. You can just add that before you start knitting. And then as you come to where your, neat, your uh, bead goes, you just slide it into place. But then it's on, your, it's on your yarn. So like if this is your yarn, the bead is on your yarn here. And when you knit it, you know, it's on one strand. And the way that I did it, was I knit the stitch and then I used a, a little needle and I put the bead on and pulled the loop through the needle so that the bead is actually around two of the strands. It's hard to explain unless you're actually doing it, but I really liked the way it looked that way. And I think that's how Tristan does it too in the pattern. But I'll have to find out from Tristan when that's going to be released. It's called the Summer Court Tank. And you should go to her Instagram, Dragon Horde Yarn. And look at the examples she's got on there. She's got a couple people and, and herself. She's made a couple of them. And uh, I, I love it. I can't wait to wear it. And it was an enjoyable knit. The thing that took a little bit longer, though, was the straps because of the, the cool way. She, it's very reinforced straps. And it's just, they just took a little bit of time. But it was the very last thing I was doing besides the gathering of the back. And, uh, but I was excited to get it finished and it just turned out so good. And you can, she's got instructions in there to make it longer. Oh, and it comes, it's going to come in kid sizes too. So that's exciting. So you could make matching mommy and me ones, or if you, if you have, um, nieces, nephews, or friends that have little ones that you could make, it's a quick project. And with little kids, you can use up yarn that you have at home, fingering weight yarn. You don't have to put beads on it either. You can just do it without the beads. But I thought, you know, I've got the beads. I'm going to use them. And it was so much fun beading. I can't wait to make another project with beads. Um, anyway, so that was that project. Uh, but let me just show you. I'm Right now I'm working on a little vanilla sock. And this is, let me show you here first. I've made, a couple years ago, I decided to make samples uh, for my yarn colors at Halloween time. So I guess it was two Halloweens ago. Um, and we were going to do Vogue Knitting Live. I was going to be selling my yarn Vogue Knitting Live in San Francisco. It was my first, I think it was my first show. Um, I think so. Then I did one here in Salt Lake City, uh, the Great Basin Fiber Festival. And I wanted to show what it all looked knit up. So I knit up little miniature vanilla socks and put them on these cute little sock blockers. Anyway, so I did that again with my strawberry shortcake collection. Um, and this one, so this is orange blossom 
which is a peach base, a bright peach base with speckles. And I, I wrote down the pattern. It's super easy. I might just do this as a free pattern for y'all. It's great for minis. If you have minis and you want to make um, ornaments. And I this these sock blockers I got at a company on Etsy called Sweet Crafty Tools. And they're very reasonably priced. I think you can get, I think it's four, either two or four for like, I, I hate to even say, I, I don't remember. I think it was like eight bucks or something. And I just ordered a whole bunch of them because I had like 30 colors I wanted to do. And I thought, you know, I'm going to do that again if I have time, which I've got this first part of the collection done uh, yesterday. So this is, this is Orange Blossom, which was one of the characters in Strawberry Shortcake. And my favorite color out of the five that I made. Um, so that's available on a whole bunch of bases in the shop. In fact, here it is on the Superwash Pawworth DK. And so it does look a little different on each base because of the way it takes up the dye. Each base is a little different. Pawworth is such a wonderful... Uh, a wonderful base that doesn't pill so it's great for sweaters it's a uh, Paul Worth is a sheep that is the breed is a mixture of 75 it's 75 percent merino and 25 percent Lincoln sheep and so you get this longer staple wool and longer staple generally don't um, they're more durable and so this is a very durable wool, but it feels so good. It, and it takes up the speckles, it takes up the dye so beautifully. I love doing Paul Worth. So that's Orange Blossom. And then I made um, another one in, this one's, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's Orange Blossom. This is Apple Dumpling. And I didn't use my lighting today, you guys. I'm doing all natural light. So it's hard to see. It's a, it's a mossy green base with like purple teal orange pink speckles here it is on the Paworth DK and you can see those colors come through a lot more in here again just I want to make a sweater using all of these I want to make like a fade with all of these because they just make me so happy right now and I think we all could use a little happiness right now in our world so that's Apple Dumplin', and I believe Apple Dumplin' was a baby in the Strawberry Shortcake cartoons, if I remember right. And this is Huckle, no, this is a Blueberry Muffin, which is a turquoise, again, it's going to get a little blown out, but it's a turquoise base with some pinks and teals, yellow, green. I'll show it to you on, this is on Paul Worth. It reminds me kind of of my old mermaid party color. It's got a lot of the same colors, I think. Um, I mean, it looks like it does. It's totally actually different dyes, but it's similar to mermaid party. But that's uh, Blueberry Muffin, which was, yeah, that was another character that was one of Strawberry's good friends. And then we've got Huckleberry Pie. Huckleberry Pie is the a boy, one of the male roles in... I sound so official. One of the male roles played by a male in the cartoon. Uh, so that's Huckleberry Pie. And that's bright purples with some greens and some pinks in there. And here it is on the Paul Worth skein. And some of them it looks more purple. Some of them it looks more pink. This one it looks kind of a blend of both. Um, and then the last one is the star herself, Strawberry Shortcake. And now before you say anything, I realize that Strawberry Shortcake's colors are like reds. It's fine. This is my interpretation of Strawberry Shortcake. And I needed some summer colors. I needed some bright colors. So this is what my interpretation of Strawberry Shortcake is, which is fluorescent pink with a bunch of speckles. So here it is. And it, it gets very blown out. But it's got like peach in it and some green and some purples they're all very similar very cohesive i tried to i tried to make them as cohesive as i as you could with bright colors um so here's the the first three and you can add that purple with that green that looks so good together i love the purple and the green and of course blueberry muffin here but you know i have to tell you these made me so happy and i think it made a lot of people happy 
because I, I got a lot of orders and I, I appreciate all the orders. I hope you guys are all loving it. Um, I made a bunch of minis. I've expanded my mini collection of bases. So now I had four bases in the last update. I had the Bon Bon sock, which is two ply. And I had the one, my new one, bl one ply superwash base, which I, that's what these are made out of is the one ply. And I love it. Uh, and then I have a gold Stellina and a silver Stellina minis now. And I'm shaking my table. But I got, I'm adding in a fifth base, which is going to be the, the Biscotti, the 8515 saw, four ply. And that will be in the next update. I'm adding, I'm going to re be restocking all the minis because I, I think I sold out of them. Yeah, I, I sold out of all of them. So I'll be making some more, but I'm adding a new, I'm hoping five new colors. Because there's a lot of characters on Strawberry Shortcake and they all need a little bit of attention. Even though there's a lot of them that are purple. They won't all be purple though. But this one is going to be, this is the next one. And this one is, I'll show it to you on the, on the base too. This is Lemon Meringue. And I posted on Instagram yesterday that Lemon Meringue, Lemon is like my favorite flavor of dessert. So Lemon Filled Donuts, Lemon Meringue Pie, uh, anything lemon, lemon cake, lemon frosting, I love it. So this is Lemon Meringue. And here it is on the Paul Barth base makes me happy yellow doesn't always make everybody happy you know but this has all the beautiful summery colors in it and I have I think I'm already gonna make in my Aaron weight I'm gonna make me a hat out of this color and I have pom-poms in my shop and I have a pink one that's gonna be beautiful with this so I'm gonna make a hat I don't know if it'll be a design or just a vanilla hat I'm not sure um, but that's the new lemon meringue and I'm getting things ready to make the next color, which I believe is going to be raspberry tart. That one is going to be beautiful too. It's going to be a berry color with some speckles. I haven't decided yet. And I've got others in, in the works too, because there's raspberry tart. There's an apricot. There's, um, angel cake. That one's, that one will be fun too. But just remember, these are just my interpretation. They don't have to be true to the colors on the show, right? There's no rules. We make our own rules. And anyway, so I'm making the little mini sock right now with that. And it's just been a lot of fun to work with colors again. You know, I think we get into a rut sometimes. Or, I, you know, I get drawn to the same colors, uh, things that sell really well. I'll, I'll continue to make a lot in that color. Um, but I, I just want to expand the palette. I'm trying to have more base, more bases and more colors to choose from in the shop. So look for that coming up. It, do, it means I, my updates might be a little different because it's hard to keep up with yarn dyeing if you've got, gosh, I think I have 13 to, I think I have 13 or 15 bases now. And so every time you dye yarn, I want, I, I try to do all the bases at once. And, and that takes all day to do one color. So it can be a lot of work um, keeping up, just keeping up with the updates. So I'm gonna try to do my best with that. And I, I am expanding into more non-super wash bases, which I really love. Uh, in fact, I'm using one of my non-super wash bases right now for my next project that's not finished. It's in progress. Um, I saw this pattern. It's called Festival of Stitches. It was a knit along by Lisa. I don't know if she pronounces it Haynes or it's H A N N E S. Um, it's Maliha M A L I H A Designs, and it's a shawl. And it's it was a I've never seen a design like this, so I thought you know I want to make that because I it's beautiful. And, and it's the way she does the pattern is you can customize it to the size of shawl that you want. And I chose just to go with the biggest, the biggest size that I think it's the one that she made on the cover. Um, let's see if I can get my hands on this, do it the right way. Yes. Okay. So it's a shawl that starts off knitting a triangle, this part. So it looks like a regular triangle shawl. But then you put half the stitches on hold and you start working straight across. 
So it's going to be like a wrap when you're done with it. It'll be long and rectangle rectangle shaped, but then she puts like a tassel on the front where the little triangle point is. It's so cute. And it's got these amazing baubles on it. Baubles can be temperamental and these ones worked out really, really well. And I wanted mine, you can make it really contrasty, but I wanted mine to be a little more cohesive, a little more um, subtle and blended. Cause I really am a subtle person, like with colors and stuff that I wear. Um, and I do love pink though. So I chose to use my ballerina color, which is a pink, mauve pink. And this base is the, one of my new bases, the Frappe Fingering, which is 56% Merino. On my last podcast, I totally gave the wrong percentages. It's 56% uh, Superwash Merino and 44% Mohair. So this is like a combo of merino mohair and it's super soft. I love working with it. And then I used my oatmeal colorway, which is this light tan. And then one that I haven't used, you can't see it very well in here yet because it's just the these cream colored stripes. And it's the, uh, the dried rose petals. It's right here. And it's also in the mohair merino base. It's got like a... It's got a light, light tan base with speckles of gold uh, mauve and um, like a, a gray color in there. Anyway, it's this has been so much fun. There's some slip stitches. The oatmeal color is a non-superwash base. It's just 100% non-superwash merino. It's very squishy. I'm just excited. It, this does take a little bit of time if you go with the big size especially. But I'm working in the slip stitch um, section now and I believe there's one more section after this. One, maybe two. And then you go and you take the other stitches off the holder on this side and you basically repeat the pattern but you are gonna have the opposite asymmetrical, you know what I'm saying. So that it turns out to be like a long rectangle. So that's beautiful. It's been so much fun to work on. I haven't worked on it in the last couple weeks though because I've been trying to, I've made that tank and I wanted to finish the tank. Gosh, you can see my colors. Look at this. I mean, the tank, the shawl, you, my, I love mauves and, and pinks. But um, anyway, that's those are the things that I'm working on right now, you guys. And I so badly, the other night I went through my yarn and I pulled colors to make the Andrea Maori sweater. And then I saw Tristan's sweater and I'm like, mm, I'm going to pull colors to make that. And I'm like, no, let's finish the shawl first. And I have another Andrea Maury sweater that I'm still working on. It's the, uh, uh, the stone crop pullover. I still haven't finished that. I don't know why I just put it aside. I'm on the, I'm on the ribbing on the bottom of the sweater. And then I just have to add the sleeves. So I'm, I'm like almost there. <coughs> So I'm going to try to finish that before my next podcast, of course. And by then, maybe I'll have Tristan's sweater done, or maybe I'll have even started Andrea Mowry's. I was looking at color combos. Because of the slip stitches, um, it, it it's a contrasty look. So I'm trying to find something that I'm not normally drawn to. I'm trying to find some combos that I don't normally make. Um for that sweater so that it's not the same old tans and mobs and pinks and even though this one obviously is not that so I'm looking at combos right now um, and I will pick those out maybe I'll have those ready for the next podcast I'm going to try to podcast uh, a little sooner next time if I can I don't it just took a little a little time this last time um, oh, but I do want to talk about, I try to slip in a little bit of, uh, mental health stuff every podcast, not because you guys need it, uh, just because it's, you know, it's, these are things that I think about while I'm dying yarn as I'm listening to what's going on in the world or in our community. Um, uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about really quick though. Um, and so if you're, if you're here just for knitting stuff, this, you may not want to stick around for this. It's fine. I don't. I don't care. It's okay. I understand is what I say, what I mean. Um, but I noticed that 
nowadays, um, as I, you know, as I'm listening to podcasts or I'm watching, I, I don't watch a lot of news anymore just because I, I think you guys know my feelings about the media. Um, the media is one of the most toxic things in our lives right now. And I'm talking about news media, cable news, probably not your local news. If you if you catch your local news, I don't watch our local news anymore, but I used to. And I remember them being pretty objective, although I wasn't paying much attention to it back then. But nowadays, it's disappointing to me, actually, from a from a uh, an unbiased, you know, point of view. It's disappointing to watch media and go from channel to channel and hear opposite views like um it's almost like the same story is told from so many different angles that you don't really understand what's happening in the world right um and one trend that i've seen a lot of is um and i'm only bringing this up because i just find it interesting as a therapist um because as a therapist we're taught to teach certain, um, no matter if you're a social worker therapist, you know, a, a licensed clinical social worker or a psychologist or a marriage and family therapist, which is what I am, or, you know, there's, there's different licensures out there and there are some differing things about, uh, how you do therapy, but there are certain things that everybody believes and teach when they're doing therapy, points of view about how people get better and, and and things that really do create a more positive life for people. One of those things is, gosh, that took me five minutes just to get to my point. My point is, one of the things in life that, that truly helps people live a happier, more productive, full life is learning how to not be offended. And what I mean by that is being offended can lead to anxiety. It can lead to depression. It can lead to people being very hard on themselves. And so one of the one of the things that we would help people try to see when we're doing therapy is if you're offended by things happening around you, by people in your life or people not in your life uh, and it's hard to even say this out loud because it's going to sound really horrible but it's not a them problem it's a you problem if you're offended all the time it's usually because you're you're taking things personally that maybe aren't meant as personal um it's not if i'm offended it's not that person's responsibility to not offend me because think about this. You can walk around in life all day long and and if you're if you if you feel or if people have made you feel like it's your job to not offend everybody, who knows what offends people? What a burden that would be if if that was your responsibility to not offend people. I mean, there's some obvious things. You don't want to walk around slapping people or, you know, doing disgusting things to people, but just, you know, saying, you know, the way you talk or, or your opinions, you can't, you can't please, I, I sound, I'm so choppy right now, but you can't please everybody. You can't, you cannot be expected to speak in a way that is not offensive to anyone because there's always a possibility that somebody could be offended. So we teach people that a more productive and healthier way to look at the world is if something offends me as a person, maybe I need to look at it and decide why it offends me, why it's offensive to me, and maybe how can I not be offended? You know, and, and more importantly, though, is the why, why does that offend me? And, and many times it has nothing to do with what's being said or done or the person that's doing it. You can be offended because I know my personal experience is I was raised in a household. My father was an alcoholic. And so I can get offended by things that subconsciously remind me of my dad or things that he did or didn't do. Uh, and clearly that would be wrong if I made it, if I, 
you know, put the burden on the person offending me because my dad was an alcoholic. And because of their action, you know, they need to stop doing that because I'm offended because my dad was an alcoholic. My dad was a wonderful man. He just had some issues, but they obviously affected us kids, you know. Um, and sometimes I, I don't even realize that. I have to really look deep and be like, okay, could this be because of some things in my life that have happened? And and I also was married to a man, many of you know, who died by suicide in 2011, who was an addict. And so I can be offended by people saying things, but people don't know that about me. So it's it would be wrong of me to put the burden on other people to not offend me when really it's my responsibility to learn how to not be offended. Long story short there. That's a roundabout way of saying that. But anyway, I've noticed in our lives, in our in our world, in our community, it's so easy to offend people when you're not trying to. Like You have no idea what anymore. It's really hard to know what's going to offend people. So I know for me, I'm trying to, I'm trying for me to figure out if I'm offended, figure out why I'm offended and I'm not putting it on the other person. Like I'm not going to make it their responsibility to not offend me. Um, especially with cancel culture right now, because I've talked to so many people that, you know, especially with what's going on right now with the anti-racism fight. Um, I've talked to many people, many black people actually, that, that have differing opinions than the mainstream opinion about what's going on. And so it's hard to know who's going to be offended and who, who is, you know, it's just very confusing. And so I think if we can get back to really learning, at least for me, if I can get back to learning what, what's offensive to me and what's not, um, and if things are offensive to me, how, how can I learn how to not be offended as easily? I think we would move forward a little bit more. Uh, I just see a lot of people being offended on other people's behalf. And that's frustrating to see because many of the people they're frustrated for or offended for probably aren't even offended. Anyway, there's that. And that's been on my mind a lot lately. And I just, I hope that makes sense. Uh, it's something that I work on a lot for me just because I, I'm the only one that can fix that. I can't expect the world to fix that for me. Um, and personal responsibility is really important to me. Um, but I also wanted to talk really quickly about Ravelry. I know that I don't know all of the ins and outs of what's happening with Ravelry, um, but I do know that they, they changed some things on their platform that are causing some health issues for some people. I'm lucky I'm not one of those. I, I've been able to go on there and not have headaches or God forbid seizures. I know there's been a handful of people that have had seizures. So um, I don't know what the right answer is on that one. Um, I don't think I, I, I'm not really impressed with how Ravelry has handled, handled it from their side. Um, I'm not feeling as much, you know, I'm not feeling the compassion from them or the understanding, but at the same time, I'm trying to look at from their point of view too uh, which I don't know anything about computers or, or writing script or, you know, websites or anything either. Um, but I don't, I do know that it's hurting a lot of people and I'm hoping that this can get worked out because I mean, what are, what are we to do? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what the right answer is on that. Um, but I am going to try to put my patterns on my website in addition to having them on Ravelry until, at least until they can get it figured out. I hope they can. I really do. I hope I feel bad for people that are having a hard time looking on Ravelry. Uh, and I hope Ravelry can fix it. And I hope they can. I hope they can be more compassionate about it. I just haven't seen that. Maybe I'm just not seeing the posts, but I'm not I don't feel like I'm seeing uh, the level of compassion that one would expect, I guess, if people are getting sick. So Again, I don't know all the ins and outs of that issue, so I hate to even speak on it with too much authority because I don't really know exactly all the all of the things happening with it. I do have some friends, though, that are dealing with some of the health issues, and um, I feel really bad that that's happening to them. So anyway, that's all I have for today, I think. I'm just happy I was able to sit down with y'all and say hi um, and see what you're all up to. 
So um, I'm going to try to get back on in a couple weeks, maybe next week. Who knows? Who knows? I've got a lot to do between now and the next update. Uh, but after that, it might be a little bit quieter. But I want you all to know I appreciate you. I appreciate you following, subscribing. You know, if you have a minute, you can go under this video and hit subscribe. Um, it just helps. It just helps with, you know, on YouTube, getting us seen by more people. Um, and give a thumbs up if you are happy with the video. If you're really, if I was horrible and you didn't like it at all, you can give me a thumbs down. I'm okay with that. Uh, but, you know, just let me know how you feel. Leave a comment if you have something that you wanted to share. I, I read all of them. I get on there and I read all of them. Uh, but other than that, that's that's all I have for this week. And thanks again for watching. And I hope to see you guys again in a couple weeks. I hope you have a great rest of your month. Talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye.